In the last video uh, on this 70 watt uh, amplifier kit, I had some questions around seeing how the amplifier kit performs with an SSB signal and uh, linearity in general. Uh, there was also a link to a separate video that a ham had done um, where he had uh, sort of built a whole pile of mods around this uh, amplifier. I've included a link to, uh, to his website below, but I think I'll be trying some of the mods uh, that, that, that he's proposing. So I thought what I'd show in this video is a two-tone test with uh, the amplifier using the Magnus radio, which you can see at the bottom here, as the uh, SSB exciter. Um, so just a note, uh, during this testing, uh, many IRF 530s gave their lives uh, for the results here, so uh, just uh, spend a moment thinking about them. Uh, there was including one spectacular pop, and I'll zoom in uh, uh, to, to the amplifier board that uh, not only blew up the IRF 530, but uh, blew up uh, one of the traces on the board. So let's just recap uh, the test setup. So you can see here I've got uh, the Magnus radio here. Here's the amplifier kit at the, t at the top. Uh, I've got the output of the Magnus radio going to the input of the amplifier. Uh, I've also installed, you can see this wire coming off here. So this comes from the PTT signal on the uh, amplifier. And that goes uh, to the amplifier connection on the Magnus. So what that basically does is an optocoupler here that basically pulls uh, the line to ground whenever uh, on transmit. So that's ideal uh, in this case. Just some other changes. As I mentioned uh, earlier, um, you can't quite see it here, but I've bypassed resistor R7 on the amplifier kit to give me... Uh, a greater degree of bias range. Uh, without this resistor uh, bypassed, you basically only get up to around about three volts, um, uh, three volts bias, which which isn't quite enough. And speaking of which, I've got the bias uh, currently set uh, in this amplifier to around about 3.5 volts, and uh, I did fry quite a few of the IRF 530s, uh, experimenting with different uh, values there. Finally, I have the uh, Magnus here uh, generating a USB uh, signal uh, at, at 7.2 uh, megahertz um, and uh, around about 16 volts peak to peak on the, uh, on the USB signal. And uh, as per usual, just let me pan up, I've got my signal generator up here uh, generating that two-tone test at 700 and 1900 hertz and I'm sending it directly to the microphone jack on my laptop. So in the first test what I'll do is uh, let's just establish a baseline with the Magnus radio. We'll have a look on the oscilloscope, the two-tone test. We'll have a look on the uh, spectrum analyzer and then we'll be able to uh, compare that to what we get out of the amplifier. Okay so we're ready to fire off the two-tone test. So there's the output there. Let me stop that so I don't have to keep transmitting. So you can see there we're getting uh, around about a 12.4 volt peak-to-peak uh, -peak signal. Uh, and that signal does look, uh, it does look good from a two-tone test perspective. So we've got the uh, kind of expected sharp crossing points with this dual sine wave going up and down there. So quite good output uh, from the Magnus. Let's go over and quickly check uh, the spectrum analyzer and see what that looks like. Okay, so I've got the spectrum analyzer to do a single sweep here so I don't have to keep transmitting. So let's, uh, I'm transmitting around seven megahertz. So uh, with that uh, two-tone test injected and 700 and 1900. So let's see what we see. Do that single sweep. And there you can see the results, and I've got the uh, peak table down the bottom here. So let's have go through some of those uh, frequencies and uh, see what we're uh, seeing in the output there. Okay, so let's have a look at, uh, at these uh, mixing products. So these are the two uh, fundamentals here. This, this one's at uh, 7 megahertz plus 700. This one's at 7 megahertz plus 1900. And then there's these two peaks here and here. Uh, this is... Uh, two times this frequency minus this frequency and this guy is two times this frequency minus this frequency so you can see those two uh, intermodulation products here uh, and they're both down um, 
at least uh, looking at this about 33 dBs from uh, from the from the fundamentals. Now, there's a pile of other uh, mixing products here uh, that are caused because I'm not uh, the actual uh, two tone that I'm injecting in there isn't quite. Uh, Pure. So uh, uh, let me just show you that so, so you can see that for yourselves. So I'm over on HDSDR here. Let me hit transmit. Uh, and you can see there's some other peaks going on there uh, at 1,000, roughly 1,200, and so on and so forth. So you can see I'm not quite uh, injecting a, a pure uh, two tone, which uh, is uh, disrupting the results a little bit. So let's have a look at uh, how the um how the amp, what the amplifier looks like with that same two-tone test. So let me fire off transmit. Let me pause that so I don't have to keep transmitting. And as you can see there, uh, that's quite a bit of a different signal there. And you can see there's this, uh, there's this sort of strange behavior outside of, the, uh, outside of the envelope of what's expected there. So here's that sine wave there, nice sneak crossing point. But we've got these artifacts right here on the uh, uh, on the trace. One of the things I've noticed is that uh, if you slightly increase the uh, output power, you get a subtly different trace. So let me just do that. Hit run stop there. As you can see there, that trace looks a little bit better. Uh, input power has increased. Uh, but uh, this is the sort of thing I was actually playing around with this before uh, and uh, you, You've got to be super careful with these IRF 530s particularly with no temperature protection They do blow very quickly so you can see that's a fairly significant trace there up to 150 volts peak to peak So let's now have a look at that uh, trace on the uh, on the spectrum analyzer um, Let me set it to uh, uh, let me set it to single uh, single sweep, so I don't have to keep the uh, keep the spectrum analyzer going there. Click on single, and there's that uh, uh, there's that trace in all its glory. So you can we can still see we've still got the two fundamentals, uh, but here are those peaks either side, and you can see they've come up significantly. And plus we have these, uh, these other products that are appearing in the uh, trace as well. Let's turn the peak table on just so we can see that. Uh, peak table on here. So you can see now we've still got those two fundamentals here and here. Obviously the, uh, uh, the amplitude's much higher than, uh, than, than without the amplifier there. But you can see that, uh, where was it, trace four. Uh, is now only 25 dBs down from the uh, uh, from the from the fundamental. So there's trace four over there, and here's trace five over this side here. So five is uh, two times this guy minus one times this guy, and then we've got all these other products in here, which I'm kind of convinced that's. Uh, coming from, I'm gonna to have to find a better way of doing a two-tone test because I'm getting uh, mixing products actually in the audio of the uh, of HDSDR, which uh, I've got to find a way of getting rid of those, otherwise it uh, it kind of uh, spoils the, the result of this test here. Um, so anyway, I have to have a bit of a think about that. So let's just go through some of the other things that I've been trying here. As I mentioned, uh, there's R7 there, which is bypassed to give me a greater degree of range on the bias. I did also try, uh, there's this mod in that site that I'll link to where uh, if you put a resistor in R6, and it varies, but 15 ohms is what the pair of these adds to, uh, you get a better uh, impedance mismatch between your uh, exciter and the amplifier. I tried that. Um, it didn't improve things at all. I got I, I got a significantly more distortion in the uh, the two tone test trace. So I've uh, got those currently unhooked for the moment. So as you can see here, uh, I've got this is the uh, the drain of those IRF five thirties, and I blew the traces on both those sides. So I've I've had to put a sort of a bodge wire between the drain and. Uh, kind of this, uh, this uh, the final output transformer here. So, um, so anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'm gonna continue to do uh, 
uh, some more mods with this just to see the effect on that. Um, the uh, Particularly, uh, one of the interesting things that uh, is on that link that I'll share with you is uh, there's a whole pile of mods that uh, the gentleman does uh, with respect to heat management of these IRF 530s. Um, he, he has uh, a couple of things that he does. Uh, one is um, to, to actually put a series of diodes um, thermally coupled to these RF 530s uh, and, and we've seen that before in, in the other video where basically as the heat of the diodes goes up the forward drop voltage of the diode drops and that drops your bias uh, so you've got some negative feedback in there going. Uh, so the other thing that, uh, that, that he does also is he includes a resistor capacitor combination um, from the source to ground uh, it's a low value uh, resistor, I think a 0.17 ohm. I haven't tried that, but I certainly will do that. Um, I mean, these IRF 530s aren't, uh, they're very cheap to get a hold of, so I'm not so much worried about losing the IRF 530s, but they're a pain to uh, solder and desolder um, out of the circuit. So, so anyway, I'm going to continue doing some more of those, uh, some more of the mods that, uh, that are suggested. Uh, and I'll certainly uh, publish the uh, results of that as I, as I get them. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, additional look at the 70-watt uh, amplifier and uh, more to come. Just for interest's sake, before I go, uh, I thought I'd uh, just show what uh, the effect of having these uh, two resistors on the uh, output side of the, of the input transformer. So this is effectively 15 ohms in parallel here. So. Let's have a look at uh, the trace on the oscilloscope from that. Okay, so here we are. Let's uh, let's just fire that off. Uh, just have a look at that. We'll just press stop here. So you can see uh, now we have this uh, kind of distortion at the uh, the crossover point. So it sort of comes down rather than coming down, and it, with a clean crossover, uh, we've got that uh, that distortion going on there. So let's check that out on the uh, spectrum analyzer now. Okay, I've got the uh, Spectrum analyzer in the single trace. So let's hit transmit, do a single sweep there. Turn it off, transmit. And then we can, uh, let's have a look at the results. See so if you compare this trace uh, to before, it's made a bit of a liar of me. Uh, it, it seems to be producing somewhat better results. So uh, interesting there, the, even though the uh, trace on the oscilloscope definitely doesn't look uh, like a perfect two tone trace. So. Definitely more experimentation required, I think. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'll probably wrap this video for now. I thought uh, people would be interested in sort of having a look at some single sideband tests on uh, this amplifier, and uh, I certainly hope to be playing around a little bit more.